Hi class, hope you're ready to start some Access Fun. Access can be a great little database to work with. It can help you be super productive. We'll be moving on to Access pretty much for the rest of the semester. We will jump back to Excel for one chapter because it's related to some of our Access knowledge. In Microsoft Access, we'll be working with a database and a database system is designed to hold information to keep it in an organized manner so that it's easily accessible and easily updatable and very maintainable. When we're working with Access, it's a relational database management system. There are several different kinds of database management systems, but a relational database is the most common kind of database that we'll run into. When you're working with Access, you'll be working with the other textbook available to you through a SAM and from our Canvas link there in our setup module. All of your SAM assignments will be working pretty much the same as they did with Excel. Let's get started here. In module one, we're going to be looking at how Access works, what kind of things are available in the window, how we can create a database. And a database is really a lot like an Excel spreadsheet, but it's really several spreadsheets put together and when we were working with Excel we created data tables within Excel. Access is really a series of data tables that have some connections to allow relationships between the different pieces of information. We'll add some data to our tables. We'll look at how to open and close databases in Access. Print a table we want to quickly look at a query, a form, and a report, and how to modify a report. Those are all things that we'll have additional units to cover later in the semester. We'll just be looking at a quick introduction of those things in this unit. We'll look at some special database operations like how to back up your database and how to think about designing a new database and things that go into that. As I mentioned, a database is comprised of tables, and if you look at an individual table, it can look a lot like a spreadsheet view. A table is made up of individual columns or fields of information. So this table is giving us information about our accounts, the different accounts that the business might have. We have the name of the account, the street, city, state, zip code, amount paid, and how much is due. We also have a field here in our table called AC number and that's our account number and that's a unique identifying number that we're going to assign to each individual account so that we can locate that account quickly in our table. For example, Halco Legal Associates has the account number HL111 so we can locate that row or record within our table quite quickly. Now, additionally, we have an account manager table and our account manager table has information about our account managers, the people that are responsible for these different customer accounts. And these account managers are individual people and so Rivera has been assigned account manager ID number of 31. Again, this account manager ID is unique for each of the account managers that appears in our table. And each of those managers is going to be an individual row in the table with the field values appropriate for them. Because each account is going to be associated with a given account manager, each row in our account table also carries an account manager field. This links the two tables. It gives us a way to know what all accounts Rivera is responsible for because we could query the account table and say what all accounts have account manager 31 and that would give us that information. So all of our data is nicely organized in these tables and saved within our database. We're going to do this together, create a table, and we're going to use Access to follow the steps that are given in this presentation. So I'm going to close out of it, and I'm going to open Access.
And when I open Access, I'm going to be presented with the option hmm, to create one of several different types of databases. I could use a template if I want it. We're going to use the blank database option. But we do want to make sure that our database is stored in a location in the folder where we want it. So I'm going to click this file folder icon and go find the right location for my database file. When we create a database, we have to give the database file name at the beginning and our file will be created and our, our changes will be saved automatically while we're working within Access. I'm going to name this table something meaningful. This is going to be our accounts and our account managers. So let's just call it account management. It's going to be saved as an ACCDB file and Access will add that so we don't have to worry about it. I'm going to click OK. I've got my file location set properly and my file name of my database set so I'm ready to create that database. Now when Access opens I'm presented with the database work area here and I'm in data sheet view. That means as I create columns in my table here, which hasn't been given a name yet, I'm going to be doing it in such a way that it's going to look like an Excel data sheet. I have a lot of ribbons across the top, my toolbars, just like all the other Office products. So we can try and look at any of these different ribbons if we want to. Over here on the side, we have our all objects and we can see that Access has automatically created our first table for us. That's what we're working on here, getting that created. We have a help option over on the side and our minimize and resize option and close button like we would expect. Our work area here, size can be adjusted. As you notice here, we could close this completely and if we did, then we could come over here to our All Access Objects window and double click on something to open it back again. Right now, we're looking at the Table Tools ribbon, and in the Table Tools, we're on the Fields ribbon. So we're ready to create fields or columns within our table. One other important area of the window is the status bar down here at the bottom. It's showing that we're in data sheet view and right now it is showing us some data information, a navigation bar to look at the actual data in our database table that we're working on. Now I'm going to create some fields here in our table and we have to be concerned about the naming rules for tables and fields. First of all, all of these names of objects can be 64 characters long. They can contain letters, digits, and spaces, and most of the punctuation symbols. So we have some pretty wide open rules there. They cannot contain periods, an exclamation point, a single accent mark, or square brackets. And each field that we create, each column within our table, must have a unique name. Whenever we're creating a table, we also always want to identify what that primary key is going to be, the unique field that we're going to use to identify an individual row in our table. And we pretty much always want a unique ID in a given table. If we think about ourselves and the unique IDs that we're assigned, we might have an employee ID at work. We have, of course, our social security number, which is a unique ID that's not supposed to be used within a database as a key field because it's too secure of information. We might have many different IDs that we've been given, and all of those are probably used as a primary key in some database. Right now, the unique ID has been set up for us automatically. It's been named ID, 
and it's been set up with a data type of auto number which means that as new rows are added to the table they'll automatically be assigned a new number from this auto number field we can use that data type and we will often but for our table we want to kind of create our own ID because we have that account manager number that we're going to use now some other things that we can see in our data sheet view that could be important to us um, we have the data type other properties name and caption for our field what we want it to look like caption could be an assigned value to that field and we'll be looking at the design view way to create a table also but for right now we're going to stick with this data sheet view now we want to modify our primary key so I'm going to click up here and go into rename mode on that column and I want to rename it we're going to call it what am number for our account manager number and as we're clicked on that field go back to it here we see again all of the options in our ribbon that have to do with that field now we don't want that to be an auto number we're going to make it just be a number because we're going to assign it ourselves I'll click on the name and caption button and see that it says that it's the account manager number we could add a caption if we wanted to and a description if we wanted to so on our caption I'll put a space in there to say we want this to display like that and our description this is the account manager number now as we use our database we'll see that that description displays down on the status bar and we have all the great other information now I don't really want a default value for that so I'm going to delete that default value and we should be all set now with our unique key set the way we want and we just went ahead and used that primary key that Access had created for us and renamed it and set it up the way we wanted it so that we could have it for our own uses now we want to add some more fields to our table so I'm going to click here to add and I'd like to add a short text field and this will be the last name I want another short text field that'll be first name and I'm pressing tab here to just jump to the next column and I want another short text field that's going to be my street address I believe they named that street and then another short text for my city and state and they really like that word postal code and what else do we want on here I'm looking we want to make sure that we have all of our different fields here I think we also had a few more but let's stop there and then we'll look at design mode so that we can see how things work there so we have most of our fields now I didn't do a lot of good work here in setting up the name and caption for the last name that looks good the description I'll say yeah I think that's all good we could get a little bit more specific but for now I think we're in pretty good shape now I want to go ahead and switch to design view we're still working on creating our table but in design view we can see things from a little different point of view so on my ribbon again this is on my table tools fields ribbon I'm going to click view and go to design view now I need to save my table and this is going to be my account manager table so we'll type in that table name when we're defining tables and table names we like to use upper camel case where we start each new word with an uppercase letter we might also use underscores or something along those lines but it's generally frowned upon to include spaces in a table name even if it's allowed so I'm going to go ahead and click OK and get to design mode now in design mode notice my work area becomes a bunch of rows and now I have a row 
for each different column or field that I'm creating within my table. As you look at each row, you'll see that the properties are displayed for that row down at the bottom of the screen. So my last name is set to 255 characters, which is a little bit long. We could maybe change that a little bit. I also have all my different data types available here that I could use so I can make any sort of changes that I like. One field that we might want to change is our state. Short text is good, but we only really need two characters for that, so we could change our field size to two. We have a lot of other properties that we could update. Notice again our caption, default value, those things that we were seeing from the datasheet view are all still available here in design mode. Now we wanted to add a few more fields or columns to our table. So let's add those. Beside our postal code or after that, we want to have a start date. And this is going to be the date that this account manager started. And the data type for this is going to be set to a date time. We are, that's what we're going to keep track of in this kind of field is a date. Now next we want their salary. And for that data, we want to use a currency format. And lastly, their bonus rate. And in their bonus rate, we'll say that this is going to be a number. And we can change some of the information like our field size. We'll change it to just two. Oops. How about integer? Now, as we look at all the different properties that are available to us, we have several different options that we can use. And we're just working on setting up all of our different fields the way we want them. Now, here's our account manager number. Notice how it's set as the primary key. We're in our table tools, but this time we're in our design mode tab because we're in design view. So we see our primary key value. We see where we can insert or delete columns as rows in this design view, whatever we wanted to use. Down over in the corner, we have some different view buttons also. So we could switch back to our data sheet view. Yeah, I want to save my changes. See where our data is. We could switch back to design mode down on this corner button. So lots of different options for us. So that creates our table. We've got a lot of different settings that we can use, can experiment with some things. Now we'd like to go ahead and close out of this table. I can close it here. And again, I can use my view pane on the side and find my tables and reopen it. Now this pane can be set to roll over to the side to slide up. And then I can expand it down and I could organize it to only show tables or queries or certain things. We usually like it set to all access objects unless we're being in a database that's pretty big. Now our tables are displaying. I can double click on my account manager table to reopen it in data sheet view. Now I'd like to add an actual record to my table here. So I can do it a lot of different ways. Let me close this again. I can right click over here and open my table. So just a, so many different ways that we can do it. Now in our data sheet view, we could add rows to our table quite easily. So let me put in an account manager number. I'll make this first one 63. Um, Jim Brown 123 Street. Um, 
Where is he from? Let's say Springfield, Missouri. 65802. He started with us. Notice now how because we said this was a date time, we have a nice calendar control already built in for us. We'll say when he started, oh, like the fifth. He's got a pretty good salary. He's going to be making 128000 And his bonus rate is going to be 20% of that. So there's our first row. As soon as I click out of that, that row is saved to the database in our account manager table. So we've got it ready to go. Now, if I decided that I didn't like that record, I could delete it and I can select it here. I could press my delete key. It will say you're about to delete it. I can say no. I can right click on it and delete the record. I could say yes to get rid of it, no to keep it. Now, if I want to change one of the individual fields, I can click in that field. I can select the data and change it. If you were making me roll a house hat. And I can press the tab key. I don't know what that zip code is, so we'll just make something up. And I can move throughout my row just kind of the same way that I can move throughout any other sort of office document. My, my changes are automatically saved to my table. Now I have an undo option in Access, just like most other Office products, but I need to be aware that changes are automatically saved, so sometimes my undo options might be limited. We have to be careful of that. I also have a save icon. I can click that if I think that I need to, to save. Now, whenever we have a table like this that already has data in it, we could add to it quite easily. Let's close this table. Let's close our database. We could actually do file and close our database no database, then we can open it again. Here's my recent databases. And I'll enable that content. And then double click on my table to open it and continue working on my data, whatever changes that I might want. Now this is considered the navigation pane over here. I can Close that or roll it up so that I can add a new record. I can right click into a new record or I can just click here where there's a new record however I want to. So access is quite flexible. You can move around in it in a lot of different ways. Now we might decide that we want to format things a little bit differently. My state, maybe I want a little bit shorter. So I can use the resize handle just like I can in Excel and resize that column, change it however I like. I could double click the right boundary of the field selector to resize the column so it best fits the data. Let's try that with our um, start date over here. Double click. Oh, it wasn't too much of a change, but it did it. And then I can save my changes again using my toolbar and my layout ribbon. Now I can close the table again and it will ask me if I want to save my changes again. Yes I do. Now when we have a table open, I'll reopen our table here, we might want to print this data sheet view so we could choose our file print option and we have some settings here that we can use. Let's use print preview and see what it's going to look like if we print our table. Right now it shows that I would have a table view like this. Looks great. I could switch to landscape if I wanted. 
maybe a little bit more efficient for me. I have lots and lots of different options that I could use in my print preview if I want to change the size. When I'm finally ready, I could click my print button to actually print this information. I could, of course, save that printout to a PDF file. That's really all I have available on my computer. I could close my print pre preview. I could export this information, this print preview, to Excel. So we'll talk about a lot of those kinds of options as we work through our access information here. Now, I might want to import some data from Excel. So I'm going to do that with the Excel spreadsheet that you're supposed to use in your project. So I'm going to go to my external data tab. Let's take a quick view of all of our tabs here. On my file ribbon, I go to the same file kind of information that I would see in most products. We'll be looking at these later. And then on my home ribbon, I have my views, whether I want design view or data sheet view, depending on what I'm looking at. My normal cut, copy, and paste options. Now I have some filtering options, which are going to allow me to sort and filter through the data that's being displayed. Additional options for what records I'm working with and how they're displayed options to find specific data, and then text formatting options just like I would have with Word or Excel to format things the way I would like. On the Create ribbon, I can create new access components like tables and queries, so we'll be using this Create ribbon soon. On the External Data ribbon, I can add data from an existing Excel spreadsheet or some other sort of input and create a table from that data. We have a few more options. We've been working with our table tools. We'll look at our data, database tools soon. For our external data experiment, I'd like to import from Excel. Now I need to browse and find the Excel spreadsheet that I'd like to import. I have it saved. And yes, it's an Excel spreadsheet. Now, I have some options here. I can choose to export. Whoops, I'm exporting. I don't want to export. I want to import. Going the wrong way, aren't I? So let's see, I want to create from an Excel file and I want to import. I don't want to send it out. I was bringing my arrow the wrong direction, huh? So I want to import from an Excel spreadsheet and I'll go find that again. And I'd like to import this as a new table. And I could, if I wanted to, add it, add these rows that are in this Excel spreadsheet to an existing table. Or I could just link to this data if I wanted to, so that if my spreadsheet changed, my access database table would change also. But in that case, I would have to have both files available at all times for that linking to occur properly. Now, Access has said, well, it looks like you have these different columns in your spreadsheet. Is this how you want me to import them? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that looks pretty good. Go ahead. That first row does contain my headings. Now, for each column here, I can click on it, or I can click Next, and then I can click on it. And I can go through and set what I would like my field name to be, what data type the field is. Notice that the import wizard does a pretty good job at identifying those data types for us. But if we had any changes, we could change them if we wanted to. Looks good. Now I want to 
choose my own primary key and I want it to be the advertiser ID because that's my unique data identifier field for these advertisers. And when I click next, it says, what would you like this table name to be? I want it to be advertiser and I'll finish this. I don't need to save those steps. It was just a one-time thing. Now I now have two tables in my database and if I double click on my advertiser table I should see all that data that was imported from my Excel spreadsheet. So now I can use that however I like in my database. So it makes everything really super handy to have everything work together so well. Now if I wanted to I could modify the information about this table. I could go to my table tools and switch to design view if I like and maybe I want to change some information like make my state only be 2. I could add some descriptions here like the unique advertiser ID the advertiser name. So all of these different descriptions that I add would then be displayed whenever I was using this field. So very, very helpful. And if I want to then, I can save my changes. It says, oh, you might lose some data. No, I, I think I'll be okay. It's fine. So yes, I want to continue. I know that that state was already only two characters. So I do have to be careful with that though in case I was truncating some information that I did want to keep. So now we've been able to create a little database here. We have two tables. They're not really related. That's okay. For right now we're just working with things. But I'd like to create a query. So I'm going to use my advertiser table as my query table because it has a little bit more data so we can do a little bit more with it. So I'm going to use my create tab and I want to create a query and I'll use the query wizard. Now the query wizard is going to help me create a query which is a, a request for data from the database. Now we want a simple query wizard for this very first one so I'll click OK there. Now the query wizard says these available fields are in your table. Which ones would you like to use in this query? Well, I think I would like to use the advertiser ID. So while it's selected, I'll click this arrow and I'll do their name. And I'm thinking that I want to put in their city. And then I'll see all these different advertiser cities. That looks good. So. I'll just click next and take a look at my query. Now I should be able to either run it or I can modify it in design view. I'll go ahead and finish first and take a look. I better close out of my advertiser table because it's acting like it can't get to it. Now my query is opened in design view because it said that my table was locked and I can see each of the different fields that I asked for in my query. Now I could change things here like sort and select things. Again we'll talk about that in our query section next up. I can see my advertiser table here is the source of my query and I can also see that I have the option with my query tools under my view option to look at my data sheet view which would be running my query. So it shows me the output from the query. Now I have, again I can go back to my design view and I can run my query. So different views in my query mode 
are going to show my data sheet view, which is the results of my query. SQL view is going to give me the code for this query that's running behind the scenes. And then my design view shows me what query fields have been requested. So I can move around through my different query options. Our query looks good. We've named it Advertiser Query. Let's close that. And now notice that over here in our navigation window, we have a query. Now let's create a report. I'm going to use our Create option. And actually, we want to create a form. I'm sorry. Report coming soon. But I want to create a form. So let's select Create Form. Now. Access just automatically generates this form for me, and a form is considered a user interface, a way to enter data. If you notice, it's already working in my view options here. I'm looking at the form view, which is kind of a data sheet view. I could switch to layout view or design view if I wanted to change this form. It's already working though. I can use the navigation arrows down here to move throughout the different rows in my table. I could click on this new button to add a new blank record to my table. I could back up and I could select and delete my table row. Or I could delete that column so I can do a lot of different things on my form. Now I want to look at a report. Again, our forms will be coming back to and looking at them quite a bit. Let's close this. And yes, I want to change it. It is advertiser. That looks good. Now our report. I'll go back to our create menu. And our report works a lot in the same way. Notice that we can create queries, forms, and reports using these wizards. So I'll use the report wizard and it just generates all of the information for me already set up in a nice columnar format for my advertiser table and I can just save that as advertiser and now we have the report set up in our table or I'm sorry I mean in our database. Now if we wanted to we wanted to resize a little bit. We could use our design view to change our report. And it looks kind of like this. It's got everything all smushed up. And what it shows us here is that first the report's going to have a header, one per the whole report. Then each page is going to have a header. So I could change some things if I wanted to on the page header. And then each detail or each row of the table is going to have some information. Finally, we're going to have a, a footer or the bottom of each page and a footer at the very end. So if I wanted to change the name of my advertiser ID column, I could click in there and put a space. Maybe I want the name to also have a space. And as I work with the different fields and elements on my report, notice that I have property sheets that show up on the side. So I have a lot of other capabilities, things that I can do here. Now I could resize this name field. I'm going to go right to the edge of it until I have the double head arrow and then click and drag to resize it. I can change then my view and go back to my report view and see how it looks now with that resized advertiser name. So I can do a lot of work with my report to change things and we'll look at that as we get into that section. If I wanted to, I could add some totals to my report. Let's select a field here. Mm, we don't have anything that's really much of a total. So if I wanted to do that, I could just click on one. Let's try our zip code. It's not a very good field. I'll go back to my design view. 
and then I can click on my postal code and I could say, oh, this is a total. I just want to count the records. That'll work. And it's going to show me that down in my report footer is where I generated that. Sounds good. And I'll go back to my report view. And now down at the very bottom, I should see that there were 24 records. I could maybe do a little work on that, huh? So lots and lots of things for us to work with and to learn. I'm going to close this. Sometimes we might need to change the properties of our database so we can use our file menu. We might need to look at some information about our database. Look at our properties. Here's its name. We have general information, statistics, content, all this great stuff. When we're ready, we've changed all of our author information and company information. We can click OK. Those are our database properties. Now, we also have some special database operations. Compacting and repairing the database allows us to make sure the database is taking up the least amount of space. And we might have to do this if we have some sort of problem with our database. We also might want to back up the database so we can use our file menu here. And we can choose Save As. And then we can save a backup of our database, a copy. Backup database. There it is. We could save that. So that would be really important for us to do periodically as we use our database. So those are our primary operations that we would work on outside of our database. Some other things that we might want to do is rename something in our database. We can do that. For example, we have advertiser query and then our form just says advertiser. So I could right click and rename and make that say advertiser form. And then I could just also double click. Hmm, can't do it. I can rename it when it's closed. So make sure you have your items closed. I'll rename my report to be advertiser report. Whoops. Now that should get us off to a really good start with Access. And you should be ready to do your first project. Let me know if you have any questions. And I hope you had a great spring break. And I'll be, you'll be hearing from me soon. Thanks.